the engineers that we attract are just such a different breed in a way that they are thinking, you know, they're personable engineers that are thinking about the user and the creative side of things just as much as they're thinking technically how to architect it and put it together. That's awesome. Um, and it's a good mix, I think, because it gives everybody lots of stimulation. Like you were saying, you know, you wanted hard problems to solve and this gives people hard problems, not only from an engineering perspective, but a chance to grow in the like, creative and more soft skills. Yeah, which is critical. I mean, what is it that is in How to friend, Win Friends and Influence People? Like, I'll pay 10 times more. I think it's a Rockefeller quote for somebody with people skills than for somebody with technical skills. And I'm butchering it. That's not the real quote, but that's like a paraphrase. But you get the right idea. I mean, technical yeah. skills can be taught to an extent, but if somebody doesn't want to uh, put the effort forth on soft skills, you're not going to develop them. You know, and then takes... we, have, we have engineers like that that just aren't great around people, like behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But the ones we really like working with, and I'm sure it's the same with you, are the ones that get the full picture. And so Yeah, yeah, and I have no problem with people that want to be behind the scenes. I mean, there's a place for everybody, certainly. Um, I just feel like the people that excel in the environment that we work, you know, have both because they yeah. kind of need to be able to go out and get the information they need and they need to be able to make gut calls on things that are going to impact what the user sees at the end of the day. On yeah. these short timelines, there's no time to, you well, know, you have to everybody. compromise a lot of the time too. Exactly. I mean, if you have to make a tough decision, you have to nix something from scope. I mean, you better make sure you're still meeting the, the mission. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you, yeah. that means you have to have that in mind from day one. It's like you have to understand the creative vision as you're doing the engineering. So That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's engaging work. Like you say, every day is a little different, which is exciting. Also a little stressful at times. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I, I, I know I'm not in your shoes, but I feel like similar you to see the right? same thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. You know, you know, the project requirements change and, you know, you're like I said, out here driving robots over the internet with people you've never met, and that's a feat in of itself. So. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a nod to the sort of stuff you're doing, though, right? Because, I mean, we wanted to create an experience that people would remember, and so right? the idea is, like, you're sitting on your ass, sorry, you're sitting on your rear end, and, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're basically, um, you know, you haven't left your house in, what, like, six months because of the pandemic. Maybe mm -hmm. you went to get groceries six months ago or visit a relative in another state. But, um, you know, I mean, we've all been quarantined. It's, it's been a year now. And so, right. um, you know, I think everybody wants to, um, to experience some kind of interaction with other people or, or with, and I mean, with the project for the sports team you mentioned, I mean, mm -hmm. the sports uh, group you mentioned, I mean, that, that, that kind of hits the nail on the head. I mean, it's, you know, you, you want to give people a way to interact, you know, even though they can't leave their homes safely right now. Right. By the way, we've both we're, been rapid tested, so yeah, we're, we're good. Both good here. <laughs> uh, no, we are social creatures at our core. Outside of all of this business stuff, if you were to take all of this away, I mean, we still want to interact with each other. We still, if you go back a thousand years, have tribes for a reason. <laughs> um, so... No, there's no doubt that people want that interaction and to be able to give it to them, even remotely, I think is, is exciting. You know, we've done a lot. Oh, of it's huge. I mean, the amount of smiles you'll see on faces, like you experience this probably more than I do, but just with our robot exhibit that you mentioned. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that just to give the mm -hmm. viewers context. So what we did is we, we wanted to give people a way to interact and we saw these virtual events that just kind of sucked. And uh, what I mean by sucked is you would get on and there'd be a guy there and it's like a VP of sales from like a reputable company. And they're not wearing pants. And so they'll open their laptop. They've got a webcam pointing up their nose. Uh, they're not wearing pants. They haven't showered. And um, they look like they're super depressed and they want to get out of bed that day. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, why am I even here? Like, what, what's the point of this? Why did I, you know, come to this virtual event? And so that was what we found in our recon. So before we, we did four virtual events in Q4 uh, of 2020. Okay. And so before doing any of that, we, we scouted out a couple just to kind of see, you know, where people were going right, where people were going wrong. Yep. And we found what I just said, just people that were phoning it in, you know, like the most cool thing we saw was like uh, ABB, the robot manufacturer had um, like CAD of the robot. So they make robotic arms, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a Swiss company for the viewers. They, they make a lot of really high precision robot arms for the automotive industry. But we, um, we basically saw they had uh, CAD renderings of the robots. It was like a virtual showroom. But there was nothing physical. Nobody had done anything interesting where you, know, you could tell it wasn't rendered. It was, it was a real thing. Okay. And so we wanted to have something you know, concrete that you could actually see. I'm actually I'm going to cross your yeah, camera here just for fun to show it. But we ended up with these little robots. 
And um, basically, the idea is you can you can drive these little guys over the internet. And so we started letting people do that and interact with them, and the thing evolved. And uh, what we ended up with is a pretty cool, uh, basically an opso course. We had a admin person that was a Broadway set designer that got kicked out of her job. And so it sucks, right? But like, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So we figured, you know, we put her to work and we designed a set that is, is off camera, but it's actually in the same facility that we're in. And um, people seem to really like it. So you'd see people driving these things and, you know, you'd see a smile shoot across their face, you know, because they're on, on a Zoom call. Yeah. Yeah. One of those people so. was me. I got to drive this around. Uh, it was really quite the experience. It was a little touchy at first, but once I got the, the hang of it. Nice. I mean, it really was cool to do that in real time. And something I, I was talking to a pit professor recently about things that he's been doing to change his classroom setup to make things more engaging for the same reasons that you've been talking about. And one of his metrics that he's been using to measure if he's doing well in that arena is asking himself, how much of this meeting could have been pre-recorded and watched back after the fact? If yeah. it's more than 25, 50%, then like this was an unnecessary meeting. It could have been an email. It could have been some kind of asynchronous communication. Like I want to be doing things that are collaborative and spontaneous in nature over remote calls and interactions and things like that. And this is a great example of that. Thank you so um, much. So it, no, it was a lot of fun to do. It's the highlight of, of some of the things I've done on Zoom calls. I appreciate that. So uh, yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, but it's not it's not like getting into a stadium having something traverse the perimeter like that's way cooler you know it's um deep local has taken me some special places over the years i'm super thankful for that 